Thank you very much for your enlightening presentation, Dimitri. And now let's welcome yeah. Professor Silvia Schiavo. Professor Schiavo, he's gradu she's graduated from uh, University of Ferrara, and uh, uh, she's currently an associate professor of Roman law. Her research includes Roman criminal law, late antiquity, and Byzantine law. Her presentation is about Roman law in transition, Chives but Peregrini, expulsion of strangers in late empire. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind presentation and thank you very much uh, to all of you for being here to listen to this paper and thank you very much to the organizing committee for the possibility uh, they give me to be here today in this beautiful uh, um, location. Uh, so my paper is about uh, uh, post-classical Roman law and Justinian Roman law, and it's dedicated to a particular phenomenon uh, we see from the sources, uh, um, phenomenon of expulsions of peregrini in late empire. I will, I'm going to read for uh, time, for reasons of time. And I will use this presentation for uh, the sources. I'm going to show some text. In ancient Roman law, the difference between Roman citizens, chives, and non-citizens, peregrini, is distinct and clear. Citizenship assures a legal status through which rights, privileges, and obligations are recognized. On the other hand, non-citizens generally remain subject to the pre-existing legal system in act prior to the annexation of the provincial communities to Rome. Starting from Augustus, different procedures allow provincials to become citizens. In the subsequent centuries, citizenship continues to expand, but only with Caracalla Sedictum of 212, all the peregrini living within the boundaries of Roman Empire acquired the status of chives. Further to Caracalla's constitution, literature, but also legal sources show a new connotation of the word peregrinus. Peregrinus is now a stranger, but not necessarily a foreigner from beyond the frontiers. Technically, the term indicates a person that, despite being a chivis, has not the origo in Rome or later in Constantinople. Among these, the provincials, who although of Roman citizenship, do not originate in Rome or Constantinople. The new, these new shadows, this new meaning, is well known to scholars, among many things, to researchers as Neri, Catalano, Whitaker, Talamanca, and so on. The impression is that the word peregrinus moves from a juridical to a sociological connotation after Caracalla's constitution. In relation with this transform significance, post-classical literature and imperial constitution testify that emerging mechanisms to expel peregrini were set under specific and defined conditions. Famine or fear of famine, begging, and public policy issues in Rome and in Constantinople are the cause of these expulsions, which seem to eat strangers in groups or individually. The Roman citizens often strongly influence the expulsions by demanding peregrini to be sent out from Rome. In the paper, I would like to analyze some of these literary and legal sources where the practice of expulsion of peregrini is described. We will observe three different cases of expulsions connected with particular situations of economic and social alarm. The first, witnessed by writers of the 4th century, uh, especially Ambrosius and Damianus Marcellinus, concern groups of peregrini living in Rome, and it's linked with the problems of corn crisis and famine. The second case, the second type of expulsion, refers to ejections of provincial students from Rome, and it's regulated by a constitution of Valentinianus of 370. The third case, the last case, is about expulsions of strangers from Constantinople, namely beggars. Here we will consider Augustinian's law, novel number 80 of 535. Studying this text, it will be possible to define a sort of law of expulsions, which is not outlined in the sources as a fixed one, but that appears mostly in construction in post-classical and Justinian sage. So I arrive to the first case of these expulsions, uh, which is reported by Ambrosius uh, in a text 
coming from the Officis Ministrorum. I have it in the slide. The first slide is the text by Ambrosius. Uh, scholars think that here the writer refers to two distinct current crises, the first in 376 and the second one in 384. And the chapters are um, related to the second of these expulsions. During the first crisis, the crisis of 376, according to Ambrosius, the expulsion of Peregrini from the city of Rome is avoided thanks to a collatio auri promoted by the Senate, despite the request coming from plebs who forced the expulsion of strangers. The exploding xenophobic age arouses a reaction of disgust of the writer, who points out how Peregrini had up to now comuna iura, and how it is not enough anyway to push the Romans to share with them food in times of need. Ambrosius harshly condemns the practice of expulsions, describing them as choices that do not solve problems but create new ones. I think these are significant words to understand Ambrosius' feeling toward expulsions. Beasts do not drive out beasts, yet man shuts out men, while beasts and animals consider food which the earth supplies to be common to all. They all give assistance to those like themselves, and man, who hold to think nothing human foreign to himself, fights against his own. Furthermore, from the narration of Ambrosius, it becomes clearer the idea that Peregrini carry out uh, useful activities until then for the Romans. So Peregrini were uh, co also corporati, they worked uh, for Roma. The expulsion of strangers is executed at the second crisis mentioned in the text. The reason in this case was the delay of supply of food stocks. Ambrosius expresses himself with harsh words, highlighting, again, the stupidity and cruelty of the expulsion, through which Peregrini, who contributed to economic life of the city, are forced out from Rome. Ammianus Marcellinus, as well, describes expulsions of strangers from Rome in the rest geste. Peregrini were expelled for the fear of a mean, probably the same uh, of 384. In this text, it is also emphasized the fact that strangers sent out from Rome were useful people for the city. For instance, sectatores artum liberalium, while actors had a permission to stay in the city. Significant, even in Ammanio's description, is the presence of the word, the Latin word peregrinus, indicating the strangers, victims of mass expulsion. Peregrinus is someone who, while formally enjoying Roman citizenship, is still a stranger in respect to a given community, namely a person who has not the origo in Rome. Of great interest is also another text from Res Geste of uh, Ammianus, uh, it's about the reign of Valentinianus. We learn from here that during theater shows, the plebs ask strangers to be expelled. Like Ambrosius, also Ammianus seems to express a negative opinion against expulsions. He remembers that often the life of Rome was supported by the contribution of those peregrinis sent out from the city. The texts shortly analyzed do not give many practical information about the expulsions. However, scholars think that Prefectus Urbi decided for them. Prefectus Urbi probably had the capability to put into force the expulsions. And that probably he would have given just a verbal order of expulsion. It is also likely that mechanisms for registration of strangers living in Rome were set, mechanisms that could facilitate the subsequent expulsions. We will have more information about the practice of expulsion in the other case we are going to analyze. So the second type of expulsion is, um, uh, is, uh, uh, com comes out from a constitution of Valentinianus, uh, we know through the Codex uh, uh, Theodosianus. It's a constitution of 370. I put in the slides uh, divided in three distinct part. Uh, this constitution regulates the life in Rome of provincial students uh, arriving mainly from Africa, but also from other provinces. We do not find here the technical word peregrinus, but it seems pretty clear that the provincials, although formerly citizens, are anyway considered strangers. 
Remarkably, in his commentary to the Constitution, Gotofredus outlines the provincials through the word peregrini. So in Gotofredus' commentary, we find the technical term peregrini. Roman law scholars have always considered this constitution as particularly favorable towards students. I believe that from the text, even other profiles arise, particularly the widespread control of the students, the trend to restrict as much as possible the presence of provinciales in Rome, the concern for maintaining public order in the city. According to uh, David Noy, uh, who is a scholar who has studied this constitution, it was not the quality of education which the emperors were interested in at this time, but the behavior of the students, and in particular the possibility that they would stay away from home, from the province, longer than necessary. We will observe how in the constitution control mechanisms and expulsions are conceived. From the first part of it, we learn that provincial students, before arriving in Rome, had to get a letter from the provincial governor in which useful details for their identification were given. From the words of the emperor, it seems that provincial governors, judices provinciales, should allow students to go to Rome. So they had to get an authorization coming from the governors. An important role was also played by the officium censuale. The emperor requires that the letters of governors to be delivered to censuales. Additionally, the students must declare which studies they would dedicate to and where they would live during their stay in Rome. Magister Census and Censuales should keep track of the places where the students live during their stay. From the test, we know that the Officium Censuale had to supervise the behavior of Provinciales, who had to stay away from spectacles and prohibited behaviors, and from taking part in suspicious consociaciones. Everything suggests here a strong concern for the preservation of public order in Rome, threatened by the strong presence of Peregrini in the city. The second part of the Constitution describes two cases of expulsions of Peregrini students. The first case is connected to the violation of the provisions given so far. Provincial students who do not conform to the contents of the Imperial Constitution risk flogging and expulsion from Rome. Another situation in which Valentinianus decide for expulsion is related to the abuse of the rule that provincial students can stay in Rome only until they are 20 years old, if they diligently apply to the studies they have chosen. If older than 20, they risk expulsion, operated again by the prefectus urbi, who seems to have capability for it. These expulsions could not be achieved through the presence uh, could only be achieved through the presence of a constant and comprehensive control over student life and through a continuous collaboration between the Officium Censuale and the Prefectus Urbi. I think that uh, also the last part of the Constitution is very interesting. Here, Valentinianus asked the Officium Censuale to maintain a register in which the provincial center in Rome and the place they come from had to be recorded on a monthly basis. Furthermore, also expulsions are to be recorded. From the words of the emperor, it seems that corporati uh, could avoid expulsions thanks to the contribution to the economic life of the city of Rome they could provide. So the necessity to avoid a persistent presence of peregrini students in Rome clashes here with an utilitarian perspective, suggesting not to send the corporati out from the city. In conclusion, Valentiniano states that records had to be sent to the emperor every year. They would serve in future to source new employees for the empire. The last example of expulsion that I would like to consider briefly takes us to Constantinople in the 6th century and refers to a situation in which the condition of stranger of Peregrinus and the one of beggar intertwine. The text is a constitution of Justinian, novel number 80 uh, from 539, of which we will see just uh, a couple of chapters. It's a very long law, but we are interested just in two chapters. First of all, in this novel, Justinian establish, establishes the magistrate of Quesitor. 
The quesitor is entrusted with tasks that were previously within the competence of the prefectus urbi, so we have this new magistrate, and including the management of migration flows to Constantinople. Justinian also presents us the problem of the presence of beggars in Constantinople, distinguishing, as we shall see, among foreign beggars and native ones. The, constitu the constitution is aimed primarily at reinforcing control over people entering Constantinople at a time when immigration must have been very intense and would cause many problems to the public order or the city. The chapters of the novel we are interested in are the fourth and the fifth. I have here the Greek uh, text and the Latin translation of the modern edition of Shoal Crawl of Justinian novels. In the fourth chapter, Justinian deals with the situation of beggars not originating in Constantinople but arriving from the provinces. As Roman scholars have shown, below there is the idea that they are strangers, peregrini, in the sense that we have tried to describe before, so formally citizens but anyway strangers. These beggars are likely to come to Constantinople in search of livelihood or because they were involved in trials. They probably started begging for different reasons. Justinian says that they have to go through physical inspection. Their health will be subjected to control, and if it appears that they are capable of work, to wear the viable ways. If they are slaves, they would be sent back to their owners. If liberty, they will be expelled and sent back to the provinces of origin. In the fifth chapter, the case of the indigenous beggars is taken into consideration, autoxontes in the Greek uh, test. They too would be checked. If they are in good health, they will be allocated to public works. If unfit for work, they would be uh, entrusted to charitable work. It is interesting to notice how even the native beggars would be expelled from the city if they refuse to work, as a sort of extreme punishment against them. Uh, there's also another chapter, quite interesting, the number nine, but I have not it in the slates, that gives us details about the control mechanism that facilitated the expulsions. In ninth chapter, Justinian enables the quesitor to put into force these procedures. He would work together with the governors of the provinces where the beggars are sent through the exchange of public letters containing information. Again, the emperor deals with the situation of the return to the Constantinople of expelled immigrants. The quesitor would provide for the punishment before proceeding to a new expulsion. Lastly, Justinian gives the quesitor the additional power to send its own officials in transmarine offices so that investigations can be carried out on those who are about to move to the city and so to facilitate the return of those who have already been expelled. In conclusion, it is possible to say that peregrini, provincials or people anyway not originating in Rome or Constantinople, although formerly citizens, are perceived in some circumstances as strangers and that as strangers they suffer situations of exclusion. Thank you very much.